a plant that fixes nitrogen from thin air, contains more protein than spinach and feeds pollinators for free. Yet across suburban America, billions are spent each year to poison it into extinction. This is not a story about a weed. This is a story about a botanical revolution that threatens a $50 billion industry. White clover was once the standard component of every respectable lawn. Then, in the 1950s, something changed. The chemical companies needed a villain. They found one growing at our feet. Suddenly, the plant that had fed livestock, enriched soil, and required zero fertilizer became public enemy number one. The marketing was surgical. The messaging was clear. A perfect lawn is green, uniform, and clover-free. We believed them. We declared war on one of nature's most elegant solutions to soil fertility. But the soil remembers. The bees remember. And now a quiet rebellion is spreading through backyards across the continent. The question is not whether white clover belongs in your garden. The question is why we ever let them convince us it didn't. The numbers tell a story that the lawn care industry does not want you to hear. Fresh white clover leaves contain approximately 25 to 30 percent protein on a dry weight basis. Spinach, that celebrated superfood, contains roughly 23 percent. Let that sink in. The plant labeled as a nuisance outperforms the grocery store hero. But the conspiracy runs deeper. White clover is not just rich in protein. It contains all nine essential amino acids. It provides calcium, magnesium, potassium, and an arsenal of trace minerals pulled from deep soil layers. Our ancestors understood this. Clover was not a weed. It was medicine. It was food. European herbalists used clover flowers in teas to purify blood and calm inflammation. The Irish survived famines by eating clover, yet today we spray it with chemicals designed to eradicate it within 48 hours. We have been trained to destroy free nutrition. This is the anatomy of manufactured ignorance. Here is where white clover becomes something beyond food. It becomes infrastructure. Every root of white clover hosts colonies of rhizobium bacteria. These microscopic alchemists perform a trick that no synthetic process can replicate efficiently. They capture atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into ammonia. Free fertilizer. Endless fertilizer. The plant does not extract nitrogen from soil. It creates nitrogen in soil. Studies show that a healthy stand of white clover can fix between 80 to 130 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year. That is equivalent to multiple bags of synthetic fertilizer. Except this nitrogen is released slowly, organically, exactly when surrounding plants need it. There is no runoff poisoning waterways. There is no fossil fuel burned to synthesize it in a factory. This is biological elegance that took millions of years to evolve. The industrial answer? Convince homeowners that clover competes with grass. The truth? Clover feeds grass. It creates the very fertility that keeps turf green without chemical dependency. But a homeowner who needs no fertilizer is a lost customer. The vilification of white clover was not accidental. It was strategy. After World War II, chemical companies sat on mountains of ammonium nitrate. The war was over. The explosives were obsolete. The solution? Rebrand them as lawn fertilizer. But there was a problem. Lawns with clover needed no fertilizer. Clover was creating nitrogen for free. So the narrative had to shift. Marketing campaigns in the 1950s began portraying clover as the enemy of the perfect lawn. Broadleaf herbicides were developed specifically to kill clover while sparing grass. Suddenly, the suburban dream required chemical intervention. The timing was perfect. Post-war prosperity met manufactured need. Homeowners were sold a vision of control, uniformity, and status. A pure grass monoculture became the symbol of success. Clover became the symbol of neglect. The economics were brilliant. 
fertilizer dependency was established. Herbicide sales exploded, and the plant that had been valued for centuries was rebranded as a pest. This was not botany. This was business. White clover refuses to submit to the industrial narrative. It is a perennial. It spreads through stolons, creeping stems that root at nodes. Cut it, and it regenerates. Poison it, and it returns. Its seeds can lie dormant in soil for decades, waiting for chemical applications to cease. This is a plant designed for survival. The leaves grow in trifoliate clusters, low to the ground, beneath the mower blade. The flowers bloom continuously from spring through fall, providing nectar when little else is available. Each plant is a micro-ecosystem. Pollinators depend on it. Soil biology thrives beneath it. Earthworms multiply in its presence. The plant improves soil structure, reduces compaction, and moderates soil temperature. It stays green during drought when grass turns brown. It requires no irrigation beyond rainfall. It tolerates foot traffic better than most turf grasses. Every characteristic that makes clover resilient is a characteristic that threatens the dependency model of modern lawn care. A lawn with clover is a lawn moving toward independence. And independence is bad for business. White clover is not just soil medicine. It is human food. The flowers are edible raw with a sweet, honey-like flavor. They can be dried and ground into protein-rich flour. The young leaves are tender in salads with a taste somewhere between spinach and mild lettuce. Historical records show clover was cultivated specifically for human consumption during famines. Native American tribes made clover bread. European monks brewed clover tea. The entire plant above ground is edible. Flowers, leaves, stems. The flowers can be fermented into wine. The dried blossoms steeped in hot water create a medicinal tea used for centuries to treat coughs and skin conditions. Modern foragers rediscovering clover report it as one of the most abundant wild edibles in temperate climates. It grows everywhere humans have tried to eradicate it. The irony is profound. We pay premium prices for organic greens shipped across continents while poisoning a superior food growing in our own backyards. This is not just about nutrition. This is about severed knowledge. Generations have been taught to fear the garden that feeds them. Every square meter of clover is a rebellion against monoculture. Modern turf grass lawns are ecological deserts. They support almost no insect life, no birds no biodiversity. They require constant inputs. Water, fertilizer, herbicides, gasoline for mowers. They give nothing back. White clover transforms this equation. A clover lawn supports over 60 species of pollinators. Bees, butterflies, hoverflies. The flowers bloom in succession, providing nectar throughout the growing season. This is not decoration. This is infrastructure for a collapsing pollinator population. Studies show that suburban areas with clover cover support three times more beneficial insects than pure grass lawns. The roots go deeper than grass, breaking up compacted soil and improving water infiltration. The nitrogen fixed by clover feeds not just the clover, but every plant in proximity. Soil carbon increases. Microbial diversity explodes. What was dead ground becomes living ground, and it happens with zero human intervention beyond the decision to stop spraying. The ecological return on investment is incalculable. This is regenerative landscaping that requires no expertise, no investment, no labor, just permission for nature to function. Establishing white clover is almost absurdly simple. The plant does not require perfect conditions. It thrives in poor soil. It tolerates partial shade. It handles compacted earth better than most turf species. The process begins with a choice. Stop applying broadleaf herbicides. Existing clover seeds in the soil will germinate naturally within weeks. For faster establishment, broadcast white clover seed in early spring or early fall. No tilling required. Rake it lightly into bare patches. 
water once. Then wait. Germination occurs in 7 to 14 days. The young plants establish quickly. Within one growing season, clover will spread through stolons, filling gaps. Mow high around 3 inches to allow clover flowers to bloom and set seed. This feeds pollinators and ensures natural reseeding. Or mow low after flowering to maintain a dense, uniform cover. Both approaches work. The plant adapts. Over time, clover and grass form a symbiotic partnership. The clover feeds the grass. The grass provides structure. Maintenance becomes minimal. No fertilizer, no herbicides. Reduced watering. This is not gardening as labor. This is gardening as permission. Growing white clover is a political act disguised as landscaping. It is a rejection of the narrative that nature requires chemical correction. It is a refusal to participate in the fertilizer dependency cycle. Every lawn that includes clover is a small territory reclaimed from the industrial food system. This is not about perfection. This is about sovereignty. The perfect lawn is a lie. It is a manufactured aesthetic designed to sell products. It is a biological dead zone maintained through continuous chemical intervention. It represents control, uniformity, and submission to corporate horticultural standards. A clover lawn represents the opposite. It is biodiversity. It is self-sufficiency. It is a living system that improves over time without external inputs. It is proof that abundance does not require intervention. The choice to grow clover is the choice to trust ecological processes over marketing. It is the choice to value function over appearance. It is the choice to see a flower where others see a weed. This shift in perspective is more dangerous to the lawn care industry than any competing product. Because once you see clover as food, as fertilizer, as pollinator habitat, you stop needing what they are selling. The white clover revolution is already underway. Across the continent, homeowners are abandoning the chemical lawn and embracing biodiversity. They are discovering that a living lawn requires less work, not more. They are watching their water bills drop. They are seeing butterflies return. The soil is healing. The bees are thriving. This is not a trend. This is a course correction. For 70 years, we believed that a perfect lawn meant grass and nothing else. We were sold a vision that required dependency. But the ground is shifting. The narrative is crumbling. White clover is no longer a weed. It is a solution. It is free protein. It is endless nitrogen. It is pollinator infrastructure. It is edible. It is resilient. It is everything industrial agriculture is not. The question now is whether you are ready to let it grow. The seeds are already in your soil. They are waiting for permission. Stop spraying. Start noticing. Join the quiet rebellion. Let the clover return. <laughs>